we've got two joints. They're both radial ulnar joints, um, but we've got our distal radial ulnar and our proximal radial ulnar. For the distal radial ulnar, which segment is moving? Which bone is moving? The radius or the ulna? Radius always moves. The radius always moves. So it doesn't matter if it's distal or proximal. Yeah. So that tells us that both of them we're going to mobilize the radius, yeah? Yes. So now it's a matter of is the radius of this distal segment or distal joint, is it concave or convex? Concave, right? Concave. Because your carpals are convex. But we're not going between the radius and the carpal, yeah. right? It's between the radius and the ulna. Mm -hmm. And so the distal segment, the radius, like if this was the ulna, the radius sits on top and moves wow. like that, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if that proximal radial ulna joint, then it switches. And so if this was the radius and this was the ulna, so it's not okay. like this. Okay. So the proximal joint, radius is convex, distal joint, radius is concave. So right. concave moves in the same direction. Yes, yes. Uh, this is the one where ideally I'd be on the opposite side so that I'm not digging my fingernail, my flesh. fingers into the softy flesh of the carpal tunnel. Okay. Do you want to switch? <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to come in here and just squeezing down like that, that's gonna give my, me my distraction. I'm just essentially taking all that soft tissue and smashing it between the two bones. So if I wanna increase supination, knowing that it's concave and it moves in the same direction, and push. I'm gonna do a dorsal glide, right? So I come in here, I do that dorsal glide, increase pronation, same hand placement, and just pull and do a palm glide. Yep. And then it's opposite. It's opposite of here. It's convex. So if you can figure out that distal joint, the proximal joint is just the opposite. So down here to increase supination, we did a dorsal glide. So up here to increase supination, we're going to do a palmer glide, right? How is it the word? So I find that radial head, just relax. Find that radial head, I squeeze down, and I can use my fingers to apply enough pressure to that radial head to do my palmer glide. And then doing a dorsal glide, I'm really just taking all this musculature and smashing it up against the radius and getting it to move that way. Perfect. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's look at the shoulder. Does that make sense for you? Yep. Okay. So, for any motion we do with the shoulder, which one is the moving segment? The humerus or the glenoid fossa? Humerus. Uh, humerus. humerus, right? It's not like you were asking Greg, humerus. <laughs> humerus, I'm asking it anyway. And, and whenever we're trying to identify the motion or the moving segment, always remember that it's gonna be in relation to open chain. We're never gonna look at it and say, oh, which one's moving in closed chain? It's always gonna be in open. relation to open chain position, okay, or movement. Okay, so humerus is the one that's moving. Yeah, come over a little bit more. There we go. If we want to increase flexion, uh, which direction do we need to mobilize? 55 abduction, uh, 35. Horizontal abduction. That's Very nice. Way to nail that open pack position. <laughs> so the humerus is moving. Is the humerus conve concav a little? concave um, or convex? Um, not humor. Humor. Yes. Humorous. Convex. Convex, right? Then our plaza is concave. Concave. So you're gonna move in the same direction. So we're going to so if he comes up into flexion. So let's say this is the anterior mm -hmm. side, right? And this is the acromion sitting there. And he goes into flexion because it's convex. We're gonna roll anteriorly. And our glide has to be in the opposite direction. Dorsal. So we're going to do a posterior. Or posterior. Here, we're going to call it yep. a posterior glide. We got to do a posterior glide to increase flexion, which means that if we're going to increase extension or hyperextension, 
we're going to do an anterior glide. An anterior glide. So let's do that posterior glide here. I'm going to pin him up in that open back position <laughs> that you wonderfully identified. And I pin him up against my, my body or my uh, hip, my pelvis, so that I can Find some distraction. get that distraction as I just rotate a little bit on my feet. I come right over that humeral head and relax. <laughs> He's worried. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to hurt you. Get that distraction, kind of get through all the kind of slack and tissue, and then I apply my posterior mobilization. If the patient's small enough, I can come all the way around, pin them up, get my distraction, and then do my anterior mobilization, or prone. get them prone. With prone, um, same open flip pack. Prone real quick. Same open pack, right? It doesn't matter if we're what type of mobile we're doing. But if we just let his arm relax, relax. There you go. Okay. There's my open pack position, right? That it's going to be almost elbow to knee. Right. So then I find that scalp, make sure I'm off the scalp, get my distraction, and then do my anterior mobilization. Okay. What if I want to increase abduction? Hmm. Abduction. You just do a. You just do a traction, right? You just do traction. You want to get traction with it, yeah. Oh. That's right. <laughs> so let's again move our our joint. So we might be doing there. a inferior. Yeah. It's An inferior or. A, uh, I forgot the name of it. Coddle. Coddle. Coddle yeah, towards the tail. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, again, because we're we're looking at if this is the anterior side of that uh, scapula, and we're doing this motion. If we don't glide in inferior direction or caudal direction, then it's just going to roll right out of the socket, right? So to stay in that socket, it's going to glide mm -hmm. down or inferior. With that one, I don't have to flip over on the back. <laughs> <laughs> you can remember what your back is. <laughs> so now I'm actually going to stand on the outside instead of the inside. Just get relaxed here. Okay. And then, for sake of being able to see, I'm going to have some bad body mechanics here for a second. So I'm going to get that, pin them up against my pelvis again, get that distraction. And I come here, find the acromion, drop just off of it. So I'm kind of right in the muscle belly of the deltoids. And I'm going to use that to get my caudal glide, okay? So I'm pushing down. Ideally, I don't want to be more like this. Up in the here, business. Up in the business. And then I want to get this arm as close to in line with the direction I want to glide yep. as possible. So I need to get squatted down. I do my glide like that. Okay. Um, lower extremity. Okay. Scapula is not hard. Yeah, scap's pretty easy. Do you want me to show you real quick? I feel like you have scap. Do you want scap for video, Blue Gray? Um, no, I feel good. Scap, so. Okay. The scapula is just making sure you can hold on to that scap and move it in the direction it's you like want to. It's like the upward and downward rotation, elevation, depression, and protraction, retraction, yep. and then just making sure you can get a full distraction. As much as possible. It's, I mean, it's not a time. true synovial joint, and so we don't have like a true capsule, right. per se. It's very much... Or close to a planar motion, right? Yeah. Uh, and so the distraction doesn't matter quite as much. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So lower extremities, I'll have you flip around. Okay. So head up there. <laughs> Why did you play prone? Oh, because <laughs> But you can't do them in prone. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start at the ankle. The two motions we're going to focus on are plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, right? So looking at the ankle or the talocrural joint, which segment is moving? The tib-fib or the talus? Talus. 
Talus' moon is the Talus concave or convex? Convex. Convex. Fantastic, because the tip fib wrap right around it like that. that um, I think it's tenon mortis. Or, no, mortis. I can't remember. Anyway. <laughs> um, it's like a woodworking joint. I don't know what it's called. Anyway. So, we're going to mobilize the talus and it's convex, which means that the joint surface is moving in the opposite direction, opposite direction of the bony segment or the distal segment. So if I want to increase dorsiflexion, you need to do a posterior glide. I do a posterior glide. And my hand placement and, and how I apply it is going to be the exact same as, as the wrist, right? So my proximal hand is going to be is going to go right over the malleoli, and then my distal hand is going to come pretty much right over that talus as much as I can, drop those fingers down, get my distraction, and then I do a posterior mo to increase dorsiflexion. <coughs> Which means that if I want to increase plantar flexion, I'm going to do a anterior glide. Anterior glide. But you can do it prone too. You can do it prone. <coughs> I prefer to do it stand or, or do it this way in the patient suit <coughs> Um But if it was a big patient or I don't feel like I can control it well enough, then yeah, maybe I do it prone. My hand placement is going to be pretty much the same. Cross those fingers, drop them down. Then I would do that anterior mobilization when they're in prone. In this position, <coughs> now I'm going to cup around that calcaneus. The other hand is just going to come, I don't have to be directly over the malleoli like I was before. I'm just going to stabilize the tib fib. <coughs> and the reason for that is because as I'm coming anteriorly, I don't want to, for whatever reason or however, impede the talus from coming anteriorly. Okay. okay. So this one I come in like that and then I pin up, pin their foot up against my leg, do a little rotation to get the distraction, and then I just have to do a little shoulder elevation to do that anterior mode. Perfect. For the knee, easy one. We've only got knee flexion extension. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So if I want to increase, well, which one moves? The tibia or the femur? Tibia. Tibia does. Is the tibia concave or convex? Convex? No, it's concave. Yeah. Concave, right? Because yeah. we've got the femur sitting like this mm -hmm. and the tibia sitting like that. So if I want to increase, say, knee extension, am I going to do an anterior or a posterior mobilization? Anterior. Anterior mo. Mm -hmm. so this is the one where a patient's going to be. <laughs> Sitting up, and I come in here, I go up on my tippy toes, grab their calf or as much as their leg as I can, drop down, and pull anteriorly, or with my palm, hypothenar and thenar eminence, I get right on that flare, and I push posteriorly to increase flexion. Okay. Easy, lots but, of the knee. Yeah. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So let's look at the hip then. With all of the hip motions, which segment or which bony segment is moving? The femur. The femur. Is the femur convex or concave? Convex. Convex. It's exactly like the shoulder. Oh no shoulder. Shisa. Okay. So if I want to increase Flexion at that hip, just like increasing flexion at the shoulder, I'm going to do a posterior mobilization. What's our open pack position for the hip? Three thirty to pivot. Yeah, with, okay. slight, with slight, yeah, slight external rotation, not necessarily fifteen degrees of external rotation, but slight degree, slight of external rotation, right? It's our Captain Morgan pose. Captain Morgan. Oh, that's right. Right? Mm -hmm. Or as Missy calls it, the uh, prone sleeping pose. Because yeah. <laughs> nobody knows what the Captain Morgan commercials are. So nobody watches Captain Morgan or watching commercials. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to have you lie down on your back. Back. Yep. So, if I get him into 
that Captain Morgan position here, and I do a posterior mow, what am I running into? The plinth. The plinth and the bone. Bone. I'm running into the pelvis, right? The yeah. acetabulum. That's what the word is. So I'm gonna say the ass. <laughs> so I'm not going to have him in the open pack position for this one, right? What's right. the position for posterior mo? Posterior is gonna be it's the you legs know, crossed. Be, yeah. Right? Yeah. Legs crossed. So now let's we'll use the other one for video sake. Okay. So I cross them all the way or as much as I can. Take my hand and essentially put it right over the patella. And I'm going to put my shoulder right into my hand, back of my hand, right? Come back here, grab the PSIS, or at least find it so I can stabilize it. And then with my body, I apply that posterior move. And the mobilization or the force should be going right in line with the femur. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I say I use my body because it's a, it's a big joint, it's a tight capsule. And so we can really use that body to get some motion. Okay. So that's for flexion, which means that if we want to increase extension, extension we need to do an anterior mode. We do an anterior mode. <laughs> so what do I change about his position? Prone. Flip prone for me. All right. Okay. And even though he's prone, we can get him close to that Captain Morgan or that prone sleeping position like that, right? Yep. Maybe I grab a pillow so I can we don't there. have a lot of flexibility in that. No, he doesn't. he doesn't have a lot of flexibility in <laughs> anything, right? Uh, I'm going to do the anterior mob. So I find the greater troke and I stay just off that posterior side of it. I stabilize by grabbing that ASIS and I do my anterior mobilization. There we go, he's relaxed. And I saw his foot lay down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have the ability to really do a coddle or an inferior glide? No. No. We can do a distraction. No. We can do that long axis distraction or the, uh, I think on your paper, what was it called? Weight bearing surface. Yeah. For more acetabular distraction, right? So I have my patient flip back onto their back to the supine. Okay. And then I come out just slightly into a little bit of abduction, get them to relax as much as possible. There we go. Wrap around those malleoli, and I just lean back and get that distraction. And if I want to do oscillations, I can kind of oscillate by releasing a little bit of my pressure going back and forth, but a lot of times I'll just do a static distraction. Word? Yeah, it's sacral on the test. It's not, but it's just the advanced. I don't think so, but we can definitely include those in the video. So, for sacral mode. Okay. Flip over. Flip over? <laughs> yeah, and then we'll go over the uh, the um, vertebral as well. Hello. Okay, so I find those PSIS and then that sacrum sitting down here, right? For superior inferior, come in like this and just rock back and forth. And then for lateral rocking, go from one side to the other and just rock from side to side. Okay, easy. For the vertebrae, it doesn't matter if we're doing lumbar or thoracic. Technically, even cervical. I'm gonna expose your back here a little bit. Ideally, we want to be in contact with the skin. We're gonna find whatever level. Let's say that that's the level they point out, and they're like, "Yep, that's the one." I find that um, spinous process because that's where I'm gonna apply my pressure. And I'm gonna take that spinous process and essentially put it right in the patty part above my pisiform, right on my hypothenar eminence. And I like to, I can't remember if I actually mentioned this in the lab, but I like to come in line with the spine with my fingers and then I'll rotate just to kind of take up the slack a little bit. And then I take my other hand, which is going to apply the pressure. And I just do my PA mode. And I can go a couple below, a couple above, just to make sure I'm hitting anything and everything that I need to. 
Um, for cervical, this again, if they have a face hole in the plinth, then it makes it easy to do um, the cervical lobes when they're prone, but that could also put them into some extension and maybe I don't want to, right? So, so a lot of times I'll do it with the patient in supine. So I'm gonna have you flip over supine, but with your head down here. So my head's not cut off the screen. <laughs> Supine. 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 There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and go ahead and relax. There we go. Use those muscles to relax, right? Let's see. It's, I find that level again. I'm just going to find that uh, spinous process. And once I find it, I'm going to bring my other hand under a little bit more so that the spinous process is going to sit right there. Yeah. And then I'll use the other hand underneath to help do the actual mobilization. And that's just for flexion extension of that cervical spine. So come in and get that close to your anterior mob to do a side glide. Same thing, but now I'm just making sure that that spinous process is kind of sitting right up against my MP. So that then I can use that MP to do that side glide. For distraction or for traction, this is the one where my, I typically will put the pinky and ring finger on the occiput. Middle finger might be right along the, the traps or the musculature, and then my pointer fingers are right in line with the jaw. Thumbs up here by the temples, just make sure you're not digging in right. And then going back, that distraction. And then once you perform that distraction retraction, make sure you slowly let off on your pressure because if there's anything that we've had like negative pressure that sucked structures in or anything we don't want to release it quick because things can stay stuck in there and it'll get pinched so you want to slowly let everything kind of reset to where it was or where it should be perfect word word so we hear the best we're quick and dirty but 